Uh, Democratic Congressman Ro Khanna is with us now from Capitol Hill to discuss this wide-ranging investigation of President Trump. Investigations, really, up there uh, on on the Hill. First, uh, I want to get your reaction to that breaking news that Armani Raju just reported that Michael Cohen has provided documents showing that edits were made to his false testimony before Congress, the testimony that he initially gave. What do you make of this? What's your reaction? Well, it's really a bombshell report, and some of us on the Oversight Committee suspected that this would be a very serious matter. I mean, what Michael Cohen is providing, allegedly, is a document that shows that the president, or the president's lawyers at the very least, doctored uh, his testimony, told him or encouraged him to give false testimony to the United States Congress. And that implicates, at the very least, the White House's lawyers uh, in this criminal charge of, that Cohen was convicted of, and it may implicate the president. We need to find out. Is it possible the lawyers didn't know that the facts were false, that they believed that what Michael Cohen was representing in his testimony was true? I find that very hard to believe, especially when uh, the president has been repeating uh, Michael Cohen's lies uh, publicly. Uh, it seems that uh, the White House lawyers wanted to cover up something, and that's why they were uh, involved in editing Michael Cohen's uh, testimony. And what we really need to know is, were they acting at the direction of the president? I, I want to talk to you now about CNN's reporting that the president pressured senior White House staff to grant his daughter Ivanka a security clearance. Um, what are your concerns about this? Here's why it's concerning. Look, no one resents Ivanka Trump having an impact on child care tax policy or women's rights. But what qualification does Ivanka Trump or Jared Kushner, what qualification do they have to deal with foreign policy? And when you're overruling career staff and people with foreign policy experts to give them security clearances, and then we have reports that Jared Kushner is on WhatsApp with MBS, uh, the crown prince in Saudi Arabia, then there's a real concern whether our national security secrets are leaking and whether civil servants are being ignored uh, and foreign policy is being put in the hands of people who don't have any expertise. Do you think then, it sounds like you're saying this, do you think that it's a national security risk for Jared Kushner and Ivanka Trump to have security clearances? I do, and uh, I base this on the Yemen civil war. I mean, we know that MBS, first of all, uh, likely ordered the killing of Khashoggi. He's bombing uh, people in Yemen in a civil war that's leading to millions of people uh, possibly facing famine. And we know K Kushner is there uh, sharing information on WhatsApp with MBS. Why would we want him to be doing that? I mean, that should be the Secretary of State that's dealing with MBS or our national security advisor, not the president's children. Do you, know, do you know he's sharing information, or is it counsel? I mean, do you have a sense of exactly what he's sharing? I just want to be very careful about this. We don't know there, that what he has shared, but we do know that he has had multiple meetings with MBS. We do know that he's on a WhatsApp group with MBS. We know that the president has put him in charge of Middle East uh, uh, diplomacy. Uh, and that's what's concerning. I have no problem with uh, Jared Kushner being in charge of the White House Office of Innovation and focusing on technology. I have a problem when uh, national security experts are saying he should not get sensitive information and he's driving America's Middle East foreign policy. You are on the House Oversight and Reform Committee, and the White House has rejected uh, the demand from Chairman Elijah Cummings to turn over documents related to security clearances. The congressman, the chairman, is standing by that request. Let's listen. We have a duty. It's not some witch hunt. It's a duty, a sworn duty, by the way, to uh, be a check on the executive branch. And I want the American people to understand that when you cannot get information, you cannot be a check. We will. Uh, very carefully consider our next options uh, and we will do things that are responsible and consistent with the Constitution. Congressman, will the committee now subpoena the documents? Well, uh, Chairman Cummings is very fair. He's going to give the White House another chance voluntarily to give these documents. If they don't, then we will subpoena it. But I want to be clear, uh, the president always talks about Hillary Clinton's emails. Well, Secretary Clinton complied with the Oversight Committee and their request. 
Every previous administration complies with Congress uh, is request. It would be unprecedented for this president to just completely disregard Congress and not comply with some very basic document requests. Uh, if they resist a subpoena, what do you do? Well, then I think it becomes a matter that goes to the courts, but Congress has the authority uh, to exercise oversight. The only exception is if the president claims executive privilege, which means that there's some top secret national security matter that's implicated. Uh, and that's certainly not the case when it comes to the security clearance for his kids. And the American public, they have common sense. They know that that decision doesn't implicate some sensitive conversations. Uh, and so, so the president should be forthcoming. Uh, and I will just say that if you talk to Republicans about Hillary Clinton's documents, they will say they did not feel she was as cooperative as she could be, and that may be an understatement as I characterize their sentiment on that. I just want to make sure that I uh, put that point of view out there. I want to ask you about Congresswoman Rashida Tlaib, though, because today she announced plans to file an impeachment resolution against President Trump. Democratic leaders say they're not there yet. Are you going to back her impeachment resolution? I don't think we're there yet. I think we have to build a systematic case of evidence. Uh, here's the reason. Most of Mueller's investigation has been done confidentially. The Southern District of New York has been done confidentially. The American public still doesn't have all the facts and all the evidence. We need Is to she wait. jumping the gun then? I would prefer that we build the case and have the evidence. I mean, she's a member of Congress. She has a point of view. She has the right to introduce whatever she wants. But I think the vast majority of the caucus is going to follow Nancy Pelosi's lead, uh, build a case, build evidence. And I think there, as we build that case, you may even have Republicans show deep concern for laws that were violated and broken. Uh, and then we should proceed after those investigations are done and the reports are there. Uh, then we can answer what the consequences should be. Do you worry when she's pushing this impeachment process that it reflects on Democrats more generally? It certainly gives Republicans something to seize on and say that your party is over eager to go after the president. Now, Brianna, one thing I've learned uh, in my second term in Congress is no single member of Congress uh, can control the narrative. We're one of 435 members. She's representing uh, the passion of her district and a perspective. But I think ultimately it's Nancy Pelosi and Jerry Nadler who speak for the Democratic Party when it comes to uh, issues of what actions we'll be taking uh, with the president. All right, Congressman Rokana, thank you so much for being with us. The